Hi, I'm Rick Stengel. I'm the editor of Time, and I am here with the great Steven Spielberg to talk about his new movie, Lincoln. Steven, welcome. Thanks, Rick. How are you? So, why Lincoln? Why now? Why now is because when I first decided to make uh, a, a story, tell a story about Abraham Lincoln, um, I, I thought he was a man for all seasons. I mm -hmm. thought, you know, he, his time would have come whenever I could have gotten a script and gotten an actor to play him. But that entire process took a lot longer than I anticipated. So we're, we're talking about my meeting Doris Kearns Goodwin in 1999, and we met during a think tank meeting, and she told me during a coffee break that she was uh, writing a book about the Lincoln, the Lincoln presidency. And, 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 and I had always been interested in President Lincoln, and immediately I said, you know, are the film rights available? Lincoln, personally, is very appealing, and yet he's become a sort of distant figure. I mean, even if you look at you know, the Lincoln Memorial, which mm -hmm. we yeah. all saw, and I know you saw as a, as, a, as a boy. What feeling did that give you about Lincoln? I've asked my parents how old I was when this happened. They said five or six. And I just remember walking up these steps and suddenly seeing this giant. I mean, it, for a kid, it was a giant. It was a giant man, and it was terrifying. And I remember being very frightened, so frightened I couldn't look at the face. I was just watching these huge hands gripping this throne-like chair. And, and I remember really wanting to leave and just feeling panic and wanting to get out of there. And then I allowed my eyes to slowly, dared my eyes to drift up to the face. And the second I saw uh, Lincoln's face, uh, I, all that fear just sort of dissipated. And I just looked at him and, and, and uh, you know, endlessly compelling, you know, you know, portrait of this man, great piece of sculpture. But I just remember as a child, his hmm. face calmed me down. You use a really interesting and fascinating framing device for the movie, which is the, the passage of the 13th Amendment. Yes. It's funny because you have this view of Lincoln as a, as a person, but then you actually have this narrative. Yes. They, there's, there's two stories going parallel, really. Well, there, there. There's, there's drama and democracy, and, you know, and, we, and, and we found, based on our research and based on uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, circumstantial evidence and the historical record, the 13th Amendment was critical to uh, you know, to Lincoln, because he knew that if the war ended, no one, even a e e e even a majority in the House and the majority in the Senate, that had already passed the Thirteenth Amendment, they needed the House to, to 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 really pass it. Lincoln knew that this would never get through, it ever get through. The mm -hmm. South couldn't live without slavery. They they might cease hostilities, but Lincoln always said that unless we abolish slavery before this war ends, the end of this war, there'll just be a momentary pause between this war and the next war. Mm. So he knew he had to get this thing done, but he didn't have the votes. And, and, and that's sort of at the heart of our movie, is this fight to get the votes to do the right thing. Daniel's performance, which integrates all these different mm. sides of Lincoln. You see Lincoln the pragmatist, you mm. see Lincoln the family man, mm. uh, you see Lincoln the idealist, mm -hmm. you see Lincoln the, the the approachable Lincoln. I mean, he, yes. he, he manages to do all this in a, in, a, in a really extraordinary way. I mean, what was that like, you know, directing him? Was it, mm -hmm. was it also a revelation for you, too? Well, Daniel did a very, he, he did something at first that really, uh, for me anyway, uh, made me sad because I wanted to make the film right away. But after, you know, trying to get Daniel into this movie for almost nine years, and he really loved the writing and, 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 and liked me and, and decided to, th to throw his hat into the ring, there was only one catch. He wanted to wait a year. Now, I was ready to shoot the movie in three months after, uh, after he said yes, but he wanted to wait a full year before starting. And it, it, was, a, it was a master stroke because within that year, he had a year to do research. He mm -hmm. had a year, year to find the character in his own private process. He had a year, a year to discover how Lincoln sounded, and, and, and he, he found the voice. Within that year, we became close friends, uh, Daniel and I. So by the time we got to Richmond, Virginia to start uh, uh, making Lincoln, we had already developed a intimate shorthand with each other. So I didn't have to pontificate as a director. Mm -hmm. He so had Lincoln embedded in his psyche, in his soul, in his mind, that, that, that I would come to work in the morning and Lincoln would you know, sit behind his desk and we would begin. Hmm. 
And and I believe you called him Mr. President all during all the during the picture. I called him Mr. President, but that was my idea because I I also wore a suit every day, which I don't usually do when I'm directing. You know, it, it was enough of an intrusion to have camera crew, microphone, mm -hmm. and and play and and and, to, and monitors for playback around the set. But the fact that all of us looked fine and looked appropriate, and I called everybody by their character names. I called David Strathern. Mr. Secretary for mm -hmm. Secretary of State William Seward. I called Tommy Lee Jones, Mr. Stevens for Thaddeus Stevens. Mm -hmm. I addressed other people as representative or senator. And it was, and that was really a, a nice thing that all of us brought to this experience. It just created, once you stepped onto the stages of the White House or into the cabinet room or into the House representatives, everybody really, really felt that they were making a contribution to remembering this very, very critical moment in our shared history. Well, but now um, you're not only a great filmmaker, you're a great historian now, Stephen. So I just <laughs> want to <laughs> congratulate you on what really is, is a masterpiece and will, for so many people, flesh out in, a, in such a powerful way their understanding of Lincoln, their understanding of the 19th century, and their understanding of, of, of why and how he saved the Union. Oh, thank you, Rick. So thank you. Thank you, man. Okay. It was great. Okay. Thanks so much.